Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the series where I talk about myself and my life in music. And today I'm gonna to tell you all about how I got good at guitar. This isn't an instructional video per se, but rather a look at some of the broader concepts and things that have happened in my life that have led me to where I am now, as well as some of the bigger lessons I've learned along the way. If you are looking for specific instructional concepts, you can find that at my course platform, samuraigutartheory.com. Over there, I just released a brand new course called The Craft of Soloing. I've heard many guitar players talk about how they feel like they're just running through scales and playing notes when they solo. This course is designed to show you the deeper musical elements that bring your solos to life. Things like discovering and developing motifs, common pitfalls, boring solos, stuff like that are all covered. This course is me teaching the things that I've come upon in my musical journey that I feel make me good at guitar solos. There are hours of backing tracks included in this course, and for one more week, you can get it for 50% off if you use promo code EARLYBIRD50 at checkout. Find that at samuraiguitar3.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Now, we should talk about what being a good guitarist even means, as that's a bit of a subjective concept. Maybe the easiest way to illustrate this is by showing you two things. The first is a solo from the first real show I played. I was about 16, I think. I'd been playing guitar for about three years. Anyways, let's take a listen. I would not consider that good guitar playing. The timing is a mess. There's not much of a sense of musical phrasing. It's just note after note without any real purpose. The bends are abrasive. Granted, I was fairly nervous to that show, but I feel like that's a pretty decent representation of where I was at at the time. There's a glimmer of potential, but really there's a lot of work to do. Next is a short snippet from a solo that I play in my new course. Stylistically, that might not appeal to everyone. It's not jaw-dropping in its complexity, but I like the way it sounds. I feel like it's a strong artistic statement and a good representation of what I want to do with a guitar. I'll also say of all the people who have ever picked up guitar and put some sort of effort into it, I feel like I'm the upper echelon of them, not because I'm brimming with tons of natural talent, but because I've slowly refined my craft, putting more than 20 years into this instrument. However, within that upper echelon of musicians, let's be honest, I'm nowhere close to the top. The Steve Vai's, Borelli Legren's, Pat Metheny's, even the teachers and some of the best students I went to school with are on a level that I'll never reach. With that disclaimer, let's talk about how I got to be where I am now. My first year or so of guitar wasn't overly special. I wasn't some natural prodigy. I didn't practice religiously or anything like that. I'd like to tell you that I had some spiritual awakening when I heard some song and got totally inspired, but that wasn't it. After playing for a year or so, I heard some guys who started playing at the same time as me jamming, and they were better than I was. I grew up playing sports, and that competitive spirit kicked in, and I started focusing on guitar because I wanted to be better than they were. It's not a great attitude, it's not one that I would necessarily recommend, but that's what it was. I was fortunate enough to have a guitar teacher this time who I worked really well with. There are a lot of guitar teachers out there, there are probably more bad ones than good ones, but every now and then you get one who can teach you music instead of just showing you songs. And throughout high school, I had a guitar teacher who guided my way and really put me on a good path. The advice that I'll pass on from this period is that a good guitar teacher is among the most important things that you can have. It's kind of like dating. If things don't click, move on, find someone else and try to find that guitar teacher who can answer the questions that start with the word why. Now, one of the most important experiences I had in my early years was starting a band. The clip that I showed you at the beginning of this video was from my first band, we were called Shaky Gun. And we started out as just a couple buddies who would jam Aerosmith and Guns N' Roses covers. Every now and then we would put on these little shows at the lunch break at my school where we would set up and play covers in the front hall. Eventually we started writing original music and that band became my creative outlet. Rehearsing every week, playing shows, recording songs was a huge incentive for me to get better at music. And playing with those guys provided a wealth of experiences that I never would have had had I just stayed in my room and practiced alone. 
One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give young musicians is get a band together. Having an outlet for your work gives your practice a purpose. For a few years, I kind of stayed on the same trajectory. The next big shift happened when I met a guitar player who was significantly better than I was. For a while, I'd become one of the better guitar players in my social group, which is never a great thing for development. When I met my buddy Christoph, I realized how much I had to learn. It was humbling. He turned me on to jazz music and other stuff that was outside of my comfort zone. I wanted to play guitar like him, and he was planning on going to school for music after he did a gap year in Australia, so I basically decided that I would do that too. We hung out, talked music, and jammed a ton in Sydney, and when I came back home to Canada, I had a game plan for my life. I would practice like crazy and then audition for music school. The advice that I'll share from this part of the story is find people who are better than you. They will push you to become a better musician. There were two periods in my life where I made massive leaps in my guitar playing. The first was that year leading up to my audition, I practiced religiously religiously and made an active, concerted effort to get better. There was a deadline and a clear goal. Before, I would just mostly work on things that I wanted to work on, but now I was pushing myself to strengthen the weakest parts of my playing. I had done some reading on the art of practicing and two books that I'll link to in the description, Effortless Mastery and Zen Guitar, had shaped my practice methodology and for the first time in my life, I was practicing efficiently and with intent. I have recordings that I made at the beginning of this period as well as recordings that I submitted as my audition. They're about a year apart, but there's a massive difference between them. When I listen back, it's the first time that I can hear that maybe I had what it takes to have a career in music. Leading up to this period, I had some skills in blues and rock, but my toolbox was pretty sparse. But now I was showing the potential to be a well-rounded musician. My advice from this period is pretty obvious, but can always be restated. Practicing works, but equally as important as the time that you put in is what you do with that time. The biggest leap that I ever made with music was during the time that I did my degree. And I mean, this is what music school is for. All day, I was either playing in ensembles, practicing in the classroom, playing with bands. For five years, all I did was better myself as a musician and made me who I am now. I will say, I'm glad I did this a bit later in life. I started my degree after being out of high school for four years. Had I started college right after graduation, I'm not sure I would have had the maturity to get as much out of it as I did. The advice that I'll pass on from this period of time is that if you are in a position where your sole responsibility is to become the best musician musician that you can be. Make the most out of it. This is a very fortunate place to be in, so embrace it. It won't last forever. Since graduating college, I wouldn't say I've made huge strides in my guitar playing. It's been more of a slow, steady refinement as I put all the tools that I picked up into practice. The exception being a couple months ago, I went a little nuts and only practiced speed for a month, um, and there was some pretty significant change there. But besides that, I guess there are things that I use on a regular basis that I have become better at. Things like editing myself to create the most meaningful and concise solos that I can, getting better sounds in the studio, always trying to employ a more mature sense of musical taste, stuff like that. On the flip side, there are things that I used to do a lot more that would be rusty now compared to where I was when I graduated, stuff like improvising with others or ear training exercises, that kind of thing. I'm pretty much the musician that I'm always gonna be. Sure, I can hone some stuff and learn some new things along the way, but it's very unlikely that I'm gonna make any huge advances like the ones that I've made in the past. Really, this is the musician I am. That doesn't mean I'm gonna stop learning or anything like that. But at some point, you gotta find that inner peace where you can say to yourself, I believe I'm good. There is no one else in the world who can express what I wanna express as well as I can. I've done a lot of work to get to this point, and if I can't enjoy it now, then really what was the point? Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is how I became good at guitar. I hope you enjoyed this video and can take something away from it. And remember, my brand new course, The Craft of Soloing, is on sale for one more week. This course is a culmination of the bigger musical elements of soloing that I picked up over my journey with the guitar. These are the things that I never really heard talked about until I went to school and are the things that bring a solo to life. And one of the great things about this stuff is unlike the theory courses I've taught, you can begin implementing these ideas right away. As soon as you start thinking about them, you can start using them. For one more week, The Craft of Soloing is 50% off with promo code EARLYBIRD50, so get it while the getting's good. You can find that over at SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Till next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.